Okay, welcome everybody to Hanging Out and Talking Squarespace, uh, Big Picture Web production. I'm Josh Broughton from Big Picture Web. Tonight's topic is Squarespace and SEO. So welcome everybody. I'm um, glad you could make it. And uh, welcome to our esteemed panel. Um, why don't you introduce yourselves? How are we going left or right? <laughs> <laughs> Alphabetically. Yeah, go ahead, Alan. Okay, well, my name is Alan Hauser, and I am uh, from squareflare.com. I'm a web designer who's focused entirely 100% day and night and on Squarespace <laughs> design and development things. All right, go okay. ahead. Okay, all right, my name is Ed Lucas, and I'm with the uh, Jubilee Economics Ministries, which is a a non-profit organization in San Diego, and it's about alternative economics. And we have a podcast called the Common Good Podcast. Uh, Jubilee Economics is at jubilee-economics.org, and the Common Good Podcast is at thecommongoodpodcast.com. And so I welcome you to uh, check all that out. Thank you very much. And um, on Facebook, actually, uh, Jubilee Economics is uh, Jub Echo Min, and the Common Good Podcast is the Common Good Podcast. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Ed. Yeah, and uh, Chris, welcome. Hey, thank you. Uh, my name's Chris Black, and I uh, used to work for Squarespace on the support team and wrote the book Squarespace for Dummies uh, ebook. Uh, you can get that on Amazon, some other places, I think. <laughs> so, uh, you yeah. can find me at uh, chrisblack.com. Twitter, Twitter's Chris Black. Uh, can't get to my Facebook. <laughs> it's but probably the best. It's private. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. Well, we're we're honored to have uh, all of you join us uh, from designers, uh, nonprofit folks, and uh, authors uh, on the Squarespace topic. So uh, we're going to talk about Squarespace and SEO tonight. So why don't we get into our first topic, which is indexing and Squarespace. So. Um, we had a question. Now, a lot of these topics here tonight uh, really stem from uh, an email that I got from a, a guy a couple uh, months ago, and he, he wanted to know, and I know it's taken me this long to put it together, so I feel bad. Uh, this is for a guy named Carlos, and he said, hey, you know, I, I've got some questions about Squarespace and SEO. Could you give me a hand? And I was like, I'd love to help, and here here's the best way for me to do it. Let me do a hangout. Let me get some people. Um, let me put it on video, and we can share it and show everybody, and then uh, that way everybody gets the benefit from it. So um, the first question that he had is, uh, you know, my first site's only been up for one month, and I've not manually submitted it for indexing, only indicating um, on the Squarespace platform and allow, uh, to, to allow... Uh, he's indicated to let uh, Squarespace platform allow indexing, and he's wondering if he should click it off for... Uh, click, off, click off those indexing options right away while he's building it and then reactivate, reactivate it? Um, or should he, you know, just let it go uh, for, for the time being um, and, you know, let Google find it? Um, now, there's, there's probably a couple different answers that you can get from this, but personally, what I would say from an SEO perspective, the sooner Google can find your domain, the better. Um, so if you're dealing with a new website and a newly registered domain, I want to get something up there. And so if, that, if I'm working on my site and I want people to, I want the, you know, the Google uh, juice, so to speak, to start flowing, I would, uh, I would get something out there as soon as possible and not necessarily worry about whether Google's going to find the page and that page changing over time. Um, and so on and so forth. So uh, I don't know. Uh, do you guys have any um, any thoughts about indexing for for uh, as it comes to when you want people or Google to see your websites as you're building them? Yeah, I actually. I'll go, I'll go ahead, Chris. Uh, well, I was just going to say that one of the, you know I haven't checked this in a while, but one of the biggest issues with Google and it, when it indexes your site is you can't force Google to re-index any pages and re remove. Uh, any cache information they may have on your site. So if you start putting a page out there that's not fully developed or if it's not the full information you want or the correct information, it could potentially get cached by Google and they, they don't use the right information to get people to your site. So I would actually suggest not putting anything live until the page is actually ready to go. Um, and to, to do that, you just you know disable your page in Squarespace. Um, so, so Chris, I think you've got a really, you've got a really good point there. Um, in that, you know, go, you can't tell Google when to index your site. Now, the 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 one thing that 
you can do, it, and this is why I, I would still go with the, the recommendation that I'd had to like Google find your site. Um, right. When you when you're done building your site and all of your content is the way you want, you're ready to have it indexed. At that point, I would go to Google and register a Webmaster Tools account, uh, which allows you to authenticate your website with Google right. and, and you as the webmaster. Um, and then you can submit a, a site map of your site and say, hey, Google, here's my site. Feel free to crawl it. And then in most cases, Google, um, their crawlers have gotten incredibly sophisticated um, in the last couple of years. So when you submit those, um, those, those, those site maps, at that point, um, Google should be able to pick up on all those changes that have uh, changed and you'll you should be fine. So, but I would say you know to Chris's point, if you're worried about you know you know getting it indexed right the first time, then there are those options do exist. Okay, it looks like Alan's got something pulled up there. Yeah, I was I was just gonna show you. I don't know if you guys can see my screen. Okay, um, I could I could even zoom in if it's not large enough. But let me know if, how that looks. It might look too large. Okay, uh, I, think, I think it's good. Okay, cool. Um, so on Squarespace in particular, um. One thing I always do, and I, 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 I'm also a, a podcaster, Josh and I are kind of co-host content structure and style, a Squarespace podcast, and um, I, I've kind of talked about this tip before, but, but whenever I start a brand new site for a client, for anything I'm doing, my very first step is to go to uh, website settings and then search and indexing, and I always deselect these bottom two, so what what that's going to do is that will keep the bots out. Um, and I have actually d d done a blog post on that in the past, but but basically it's just, it's it's a first step that I do before I put anything in there because what I'm going to do when I, when I work on a client site is I'm going to fill up the site with, you know, their brand, m maybe a mix of their brand, and then a bunch of Greek texts like lorem ipsum, just, a, you know, a, a whole bunch of garbage that if, that if someone found that because... Yeah a search bot came through and, and indexed part of their content, then, you know, I, I wouldn't want that to be out there. So, so that's usually my first step. Um, and, then, and then, of course, you know, I tell people that, that when we're ready to launch the site, you know, that, that's the first thing we want to do is, is we want to go ahead and, and select those things back and, and we, you know, go ahead and allow the bots to come through. So that was kind of my tip anyway. That's a good tip. Yeah, so I, I think it comes down to you know what your goals are, and if you if if you want to uh, get SEO traffic sooner rather than later, then you'd let Google find your domain and then worry about the indexing changes later. Um, if you if you want to make that you know uh, you know that big splash with the with the site, um, then those options uh, are are there as well. So cool. I was um so and and then the other question about indexing that that Carlos had is. It comes down to the old subdomain thing, the um, the uh, your custom domain versus the your username dot squarespace dot com, and uh, back to that that whole age old thing of um, is this is this duplicate content? Um, do these you know does Google index both of my uh, my web pages um, or or not? And um, this is this should be a pretty pretty good conversation because I've I, I currently see it as like there's really no good way to get rid of your your username dot squarespace dot com subdomain. Um, you that's basically there and 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 people can access it no matter what. Um, and there's no way to permanently three three hundred one redirect that to your uh, to your main uh, or your custom domain. Is that is that true or is that not is that not true? Have you guys found out a no, way that, to do that? that that that's correct. Okay. Yeah, it's it's um. Essentially, what I've told people in the past is that's I use that as like the back door to the site. Um, so when you when you create a site with Squarespace, one of the first things you'd want to do is register a domain um, and go ahead and get that mapped over and start using that. Make that your public domain you share with everybody. Uh, just keep the Squarespace domain, uh, your account dot Squarespace dot com is just uh, you know your domain that you can use to access your site. Um, there's some tricks you can use. Um, when you're designing your site to help, I don't know. I think I'm getting a little off topic here, but yeah, you can't redirect it. Let me just let me just say hey, that. So, hey Chris, I don't want to get off topic. We, hey Chris, as long as we've gotten to that point, I have this question for you since you're, you've been on the inside of this. Um, I've, I've I've used those little uh, widgets that that are allowed to be like a little bit tools and goodies. You know the automatic logins. Yeah. And if I log in under, you know. 
Jubilee, well, whatever it was, jubileeeconomics.squarespace.com instead of through the paid domain. Um, what I've had a problem with is if I if I log in and then save those widgets to my browser bar, you know, as, as quick quick links. Um, if I'm if I'm logged in there and I perhaps say grab a an address from within, you know, I'm working on the site and I grab a right. a page address or something, it comes up as Jubilee dash economics dot squarespace dot com and stuff like that. And then if I don't realize where I'm at, if I haven't, you know, maybe straighten it out later on and change that link manually, I can be spreading some Jubilee dash economics dot squarespace dot com and then in other places just Jubilee economics dot org. You know. Right. And so that that's generated a small bit of confusion. I think in blog posts, you know, where I'm cross linking, I'm I'm working as an admin, you know, yeah. and I might be linking to another another thing. Yeah, you'll never. I mean, I, I I would suggest just never, never using the .squarespace.com once you have your live domain. And oh, I wouldn't. And, the, yeah, and then, I you, wouldn't. then you wouldn't have that. Yeah. Well, so, I would I mean, tell you just the only reason I did do that why we got into the snag was somehow or another there was a a, a browser problem where well I use Google Chrome, Chrome almost exclusively, right? And mm -hmm. Chrome, when I use the automatic login, for example, doesn't. Doesn't it gives me like this red page of hey you know watch out there might be some encryption problem somebody might be phishing you whatever and so I said well I I could shake that page if I just go into jubilee-economics.squarespace.com instead and I did that and then I realized that I'm having this link problem so I went and changed it back <laughs> <laughs> so I I think ultimately here the uh, Squarespace or Google is pretty good about knowing which one your custom domain is and which one your your .squarespace.com uh, right. subdomain is and as long as you can primarily share that that custom domain um, then Google has nothing to really grab onto for that subdomain right. and they should always show your mm -hmm. your custom domain where people run into problems is when they're linking inter interlinking throughout their site if they're interlinking using that dot squarespace.com uh, uh, version of the URL, then they can start mm -hmm. to send some link equity or kind of what Google spiders, what they all start to follow and the, what passes those link properties. So right. um, the, the idea is not to give any authority to your, uh, any link authority or social media authority, any type of attention to those uh, .squarespace.com um, uh, mm -hmm. subdomain links. And um, if you can manage that, then I really haven't had any problems ever with my custom domain uh, URLs being outranked by my subdomain versions of those URLs. Does anybody, are you guys find that that's usually the, the case yeah. for you too? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I haven't had a problem. I mean, the, the one thing, I was, on the, I was on the phone with a client today who have a, um, like a Twitter plugin, um, basically, you know, like tweet, tweet this page or whatever. It's, I, I guess it's probably just a tweet this, you know, type. Uh, code, um, but anyway, they they uh, they have a huge for uh, for SEO purposes. They have their site name, you know, specialist in this city, this state, uh, keyword 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 dash. That's home. not for SEO purposes. <laughs> That's somebody's misguided notions of what SEO right. should be. Right. So mm -hmm. so anyway, th what 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 they're saying is when when people use the the Twitter when when, when they say tweet this, it's already negative eleven on on the character count. Uh, to go, you know, to go ahead and share. So everyone has to go ahead and edit and back back that all the way out. So, so 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 there may be some some issues with that kind of stuff too. But that that's not really relating to what we're talking about. But I thought it was cute anyway. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, anybody else have any thoughts on indexing and SEO before we move on to our next topic? Well, I I guess I should go take away all the all the Greek text and all the uh, Easter eggs I've dropped in the site. I'm working on another site. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just turn those two buttons off, I guess. Easter eggs are just too much fun. <laughs> right. uh, great. All right. Well, um, let's move it on then to social media uh, SEO on Squarespace. Um, this is another uh, interesting topic, just figuring out. Uh, lately, Google has been giving a lot of love to sites that have had a lot of social media activity. Um, and ultimately, this is just because, you know, links are uh, a proxy for popularity. If I link to you, that means I vote for you on the web. And so if uh, social media can give us that same thing and Google can get a lot of those great signals for popularity based on social media, they're going to use that too. Um, and so with the explosion of social media, with the sharing of content, um, it, it's important to be very socially engaged as a part of your strategy to get more traffic. Um, so, so we got some questions here from 
from Carlos as well. He's saying, hey, I'm, I'm using these HTML snippets um, on the blog for Twitter, uh, Facebook, and Google+. I'm also including the share link. Um, and, and is he correct that at, uh, Squarespace only allows three HTML snippets? Um, a lot of folks add the add this and 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 uh, and and wondering if you can kind of use them all at the same time. Also, is load time a consideration when you're adding these uh, these 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 things? So so first of all, um, three snippets. Yeah, that's the that's the max. But uh, you can jam a lot of HTML into each snippet and multiple um, sharing pieces, right? <clears throat> I sure. put three or four buttons into a single snippet. <laughs> yeah. And, and what I would like to use this for is actually put a podcast player up there. If I could figure out how to you know, do it, I, that would be the ideal place, I think, to have a yeah, you could probably, play bar. That's just you could probably shove an entire right site now. in one of those widgets if you want to. <laughs> That'd be kind of fun. I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> would that be website <laughs> inception? Uh, perhaps. <laughs> just don't don't kick the widget. Right. Okay. So that's, I mean, that's all pitch there. But I think the other interesting part of this question is, you know, do those social sharing buttons, do they slow your site down? Um, in my experience is, yeah. I mean, if you're making a bunch of calls to other servers and that content is slow on their servers or can't be delivered, then that's going to slow your site down and that, that might hurt your hurt your content, your ability to for people to share. Uh, what do you guys think? Mm-hmm. I've noticed there's some right. drag. Yeah, it's 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 gonna have to read through those scripts. I mean, there 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 may be a way to um to make a to to make that call once. Um, so I mean, you know, there there may be some crafty ways to do it. Where's Brandon Davenport when you need him? He was invited, but he said he couldn't join because he's in the middle of something right now. So good, because that would have been a tangent. That would we would have all had to like do this. <laughs> Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we have video. Wait, wait, how'd you do that? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, they'll slow, they'll slow things down. I think the interesting thing is um, with with the uh, with Squarespace six coming, and I know that everybody's like, well, you know, shut up about Squarespace six until Squarespace six comes out. Uh, but um, there's going to be a lot more options to. Uh, just share things as a native part of the Squarespace a uh, applica application. Have you guys dabbled with any of that in, in V6 at all? As far as sharing? Yeah, some of the unique uh, sharing that they have in the beta. Mm, I've not dabbled with that part of it yet. <laughs> so, no. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't built anything that you know I would want to share publicly, so that's why I haven't messed with that <laughs> yet. Uh, you don't have to. Ha you just have to be like me and uh, not have any uh, <laughs> any any uh, you know ego about it and just try. I just do it to try and play with things and mess with things. Right. But um, but I have seen what what they what they're showing is that if you do integrate your social media accounts and it's just you know kind of as easy as as adding something and then having it go through the OAuth, then you know when you do go back out to the blog and let's say you want to share something, um, it's you know kind of Right there in in the in the blog post, and based on the you know you logging in and and and, and allowing people to share um, things like that. So I this is pretty interesting. I think this is you know Squarespace is, usually does a pretty good job about taking uh, you know other other uh, integrations and then kind of make putting them on their own servers so that it's more efficient and that it doesn't bog your site down. Um, does, is this are we going to see the same type of uh, mentality applied to these social sharing buttons, or will we see something? Will could they be, these be slow too? Are you asking me? Because <laughs> I, I don't know. He's not asking me. <laughs> I'm asking. I'm asking for for opinions uh, based on you know you know what we might think about. Squarespace. I think we just have to trust that if those are V6 components, that well, they're fully optimized for the best quality well, they're in. Yeah, well, I, I can speak to that um, in V5, using um, the Facebook like button is a big pain to get that implemented on your site. Um, and I know Facebook's going through some changes where they're getting rid of their Facebook markup language, uh, FBML, and switching over to something else. And I, it's just a lot to keep up with for the average person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just for the average designer, you know, front-end web developer that does this kind of stuff, but yeah, just for just you know, Squarespace's target market um, 
from my understanding, you know, is you know they they target a lot of professional artists and just a lot of average users, so people that would not, you know, how to know how to easily integrate uh, Facebook um, to the best of its ability to, to be able to share your stuff and like your stuff. So I think adding more social sharing features within V6, more dynamic stuff is a direction they're wanting to go, and we're seeing that already. You know, the way they connect everything. Yeah, if, I, if you've dabbled with V6 or, yeah. or or six, as they call it, just six. yeah, right. It's Christmas. It's just six. Yeah. Six. Right. I, I've dabbled with six. I have. I have two. Um, I don't know if it's. Is it called beta? It doesn't say beta on the side, but it, they've actually um, taken it off because they're they're cleaning it up for a customer preview. So it it's uh, they're they're removing a lot of those uh, references. Yeah. I've seen I've seen that the social sharing looks significantly easier. Yes. Um, and so I'm I'm all for it because adding these little plugins and junk in, in the uh, um, what do we call them <laughs> the little uh, things in the blog posts uh, the share sorry. buttons not the share buttons but um, in the what's the little field called widgets or not they're not widgets what uh, are they called oh the snippets oh, the snippets yeah snippets, widgets yeah. snippets you know um, semantics but. <laughs> Yeah, adding all that junk in there, you know, when when Squarespace is otherwise so ready to go in so many other ways, eh, I'm glad they're getting on with it with six. It just right. Makes sense. Right. Um. <laughs> oh, Alan never ceases. To, uh, <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. Um. So I think uh, then we've got another question coming in and. Uh, that question on this on, on is, um, do you know of a way to create a more uniform appearance of Facebook shares from my site? Facebook picks up on stray images and text from my site. I can manually change this on Hootsuite sometimes, but the same thing with Facebook and Google+. Plus. Um, sometimes grabs the wrong image, sometimes uh, grabs the wrong description, that type of thing. Can I do anything about that? Um, the answer is yes and no, uh, from, from my experience, uh, because... <laughs> Go, uh, the, the search engines have a made available a special meta tag that you can use on all of your blog posts, and actually a, a couple of them. One, a meta tag for your image and a meta tag for the description or the snippet of your post. And you can actually set that in the HTML of your, of your site, and then if you share it, um, Google will always grab and Facebook should always grab those two, those two properties. Now, the bad news is that for, for the longest time, I've never been able to do insert a, uh, or at least through the, through the basic Squarespace UI, insert a meta tag in the page header at a page level. Um, so maybe I've been doing something wrong all this time, but that's, that's kind of the, the, the long and the short of it, and that, that's what's where I've ended up getting stuck in the, in the past. So um, Alan, you know, Ed, Chris, have you guys had any experience with this meta tag and um, any way to kind of overcome this, this bad social media sharing experience that, that one can see? All I do is straighten it out when it gets listed on Facebook. You know, I, if I have to no. change the title, uh, if I have to change the description back, uh, just grunt and bear it. <laughs> I mean, I haven't, I haven't yet come to be, uh, I suppose, cuddled enough to think that it's just going to be delivered properly the first time, so I just go with it. Yeah, I've, I, I've been working um, with another developer discussing a way to do that. So, so maybe, maybe there could be a plug-in coming to a... a a thing near you, Squarespace. At some media. point, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, because yes, that 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 is an issue. So, uh, but but it is possible to actually move content, uh, page specific content, to the right area of that header. You know, wherever you want to put it. It's just a matter of using script to do it and, and just code things. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so. From what I understood, the uh, the guys having some issues with Facebook grabbing the wrong image and the wrong description when someone else is sharing his blog posts. Yeah, it's anything. It's basically what's shared from default social media sharing buttons without any other oh. effort. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I know Facebook will grab whatever it wants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On the page, and a lot of uh, I've noticed some issues in the past with some clients and just with some customers when I was with Squarespace was that Facebook was grabbing images in the sidebar 
mm-hmm. um, because the, in in the HTML uh, and the way the templates are structured, the sidebar code comes before the content code. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Facebook would kind of grab the first image it got to, which wouldn't be related to the blog post, or it may grab some text in the sidebar. Um, and there, yeah. face, Facebook's the biggest issue um, because you can't force Facebook to choose specific things. There's tricks, you know, if you get it like with what Alan was saying with scripts, if you get into like the deep Facebook markup language, I mean, you could create, you know, custom meta tags per page, but then you're, you know, you can't add that to the head of the site. Um, yeah, so that's, you can, you, and that's at a page level, as, as you were saying. So yeah, and that's the whole crux of things. I mean, I'm looking at this uh, article that that I mean, Google's had this for quite some time, but um, uh, or actually, this is the wrong article. Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed to be sharing. Oh this. boy, <laughs> <laughs> what, what? ruin the show? Darn it! Uh, but they they did offer um, two specific meta tags that you could use in the head of your site, um, but yeah. like you said, Chris, you just can't access it without yeah. without a, a special plugin that Alan and a developer are working on as we speak. Actually, not as we speak, because you can see what you're doing. Alan, get to work. <laughs> I've actually used uh, addthis.com a lot for some clients um, yeah. on a couple of my personal sites and at the day job I would use it. And that's that's got a lot of um, customization you can do. Uh, with that, I mean, if you wanted to go in and uh, you could change the, like, if you if you wanted to take the time <laughs> to add the add this code to each blog post, like within the content of the blog, you could customize the dis- the meta description that all the social sharing links add this uses shares um, on the social networks. Hmm. That would require a lot of work and probably more work than people would want to go into, but. Mm-hmm. That's an op- that's an option. Their their code they have that they use is pretty easy to follow. So that that's an yeah. option. You know, I do. So. I generally add this and share this and those types of tools. Yeah. You know, they're they're pretty decent unless you need them to do something very specific, in which case they're garbage. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're pretty effective. Uh, I recommend them. Yeah. Okay, so those are the questions we had about uh, social uh, media and, and SEO for Squarespace right now. Does anybody have any other topics they want to throw out there before we move on to our, our next topic? No, what's our next topic? Our next topic, and I'm so glad you asked, is uh, SEO keyword selection. So, you know, what, what, uh, what keywords should you pick when you're, when you're trying to go after uh, keywords on your site and trying to rank for things? Um, and... This is, I think, one of the, the, the biggest challenges, I think, for any webmaster is, like, how do you organize your site, and then how do you uh, go after, you know, keywords for, for those, um, for, for what it is you're going after. Um, and I think, ultimately, it comes down to, uh, first, what are you trying to accomplish? What is your... Uh, what is your visitor trying to accomplish? So if you're in the business of doing something, what are the things that your visitor needs to see um, as a part of their research process when they're buying? Um, and that's the first place that I would start because chances are if you're a home remodeler, you're going to see you know, home remodeling, uh, home remodeling uh, uh, portfolios, home remodeling galleries, home remodeling testimonials. You're going to see people searching for all those types of things as part of the research process. So um, I think Number one, that's a that's a good place to start. It's just what about you? You know, think about you yourself, what you're trying to go after, and what your users are trying to uh, accomplish. Um, so designers and, and and other developers on the on the hangout here, um, uh, I'm sure you guys come at at web development uh, differently than I do. Um, how do you how do you consider search engines um, when you're uh, coming together with a with a with a new website? Go ahead, Alan. Oh, um, I generally don't think, I mean, you know, when, when, when I'm working on a site, I'm not thinking SEO, I'm thinking more semantic markup, I guess, which which does become, you know, v- very important to SEO. So, I mean, I'm, I'm more thinking about, like, the structure of the page, like, I'm going to start each page title as an H2, and then I'm going to go to an H3, and then I'm going to, you know, make sure that, Everything, everything is closed and everything is working. And then you know, turn off styles and see how see how Google sees the site, because um, Google is the the biggest blind user online. I don't know if you knew that or not, but because um, Google ignores all the uh, style and the the look of the site, um, 
So, uh, um, yeah, so, so that's, that's generally what I'm, what I'm thinking about first is, you know, here's, here's the content. Let, let me check out the content. Okay, it's, it's very well written. Um, it, you know, and, then, and then go ahead and display that content in such a way that it's going to work through, through an outline, basically, which tends to work very well for SEO. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Um, I have the uh, headers in mind. You know, I work from two down to four usually. And I haven't really obsessed over keywords, and maybe that's a failing of mine. But um, I, I do, I do mind that you know the thing has to be structured like so. But I, Alan, you raised the question I wanted to ask. When I take a picture and I put it to justify to the right of the text at the beginning of a post, mm -hmm. am I, I come somehow or another hosing myself? Am, is is does Google just know to get to the text and, and never mind that picture and it's captured? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean. It's going to look for. Sorry if you hear squeaking. It's a dog toy. <laughs> uh, Google will will see the image. I mean, it, it, but it, it's going to look for things um, for accessible characters. Like you know, I mean, I mean it's going to look for for the alt um, ca characterization that that you can add to that image. So so like 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 let's say it's a it's a photo of a fountain out outside of your building or whatever. And I mean that that might be a a very that might be part of your brand, so you might say, you know, this might be, be called the Square Flare Fountain or something like that, squareflare.com, and and then so, so you'd want to go ahead and put the alt um, the alt tag on, on that image j just to kind of describe that, and that's not right. as much for SEO as it is for accessibility for for those who have right. um, sight in, in, like like a sight impaired user for in, for example, so. Um, right. But yeah, I mean, I mean, it's going to see that image. But I mean, if there's nothing around it, if 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 you basically say alt quote quote and and you don't put anything in there, it's it's going to just ignore it. It's not the text. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not, but, I'm not I mean, sabotaging myself anyway, am I? No, not at all. I mean, okay. Okay. if you look at my if you look at my screen right now, I mean, I do this on every single one of my blog posts. I always have an image there, and in fact, you know, Google um, Google understands that a lot of people are vi uh, visual, and so imagery is uh, typically a, a good thing. Um, but you will notice that you know, in my in my uh, image name, I do have you know the uh, I do have some keywords, or I do have um, kind of what this post is about. So you know, this last week I blogged about you know the, the Squarespace website show and tell um, where I had all these designers submit and then I showcase their work. Um, everybody's invited to participate uh, and and see notice that the, how the file name has uh, is very similar to the title um, and then you know to Alan's point I also had an alt tag in there that basically told Google what this image is representing so that they can include that in their algorithm about what that page is about. So totally. Totally, and that and that helps quite a bit. So I would I wouldn't uh, necessarily think that images are, are a bad thing. They're they're, they're pretty good. Yeah, you know, the question as long as oh go ahead, Al. Oh, I was, I was going to also suggest that a, a lot of people when they're when they're creating an email campaign may grab web content, um, and you know most um, email clients by default will display images off. Um, and, and until you know you get that that prompt that says view images below or always view images from sender or whatever. Um, so with with that in mind, you, you I mean you, you want to kind of get in the, in the habit of like w when there is an image, like like let's say it's a banner image in, in your email even, you can go ahead and say, you know, company logo or whatever. I mean, go, go ahead and try and give as much identification to those as possible because when, when that email for, for, for this example d doesn't show the image, then that, I mean, I mean you, you've, you've seen it before how it's like I mean, you might even see where it just says, you know, logo underscore zero zero one dot JPEG, and it's like it just it means nothing to anyone, you know. So so go ahead and be descriptive when you can. Um, but yeah, I mean that that's just kind of a side note. No, that's a good point. So yeah. What I wanted to ask um, was categories. Uh, how many categories makes good sense? Do so you start to confuse Google? If you put in too many, put the same post in too many categories, or or something like that. Uh, not really, but in general, um, one of the things to consider is that if you have a ton, 
of links on your page and having a bunch of categories that adds a bunch of links, um, you kind of dilute the value of, of that page's ability to uh, flow equity to the rest of your site. Um, so PageRank and how Google's algorithm is constructed, basically um, it takes all of the equity or all the link juice, you might hear people call it, uh, that's pointing to a given page and then it, it spreads all of it equally amongst all of the pages that it links to. And so if you have a page that links to 100 other pages, you're diluting or you're sending only, you know, one one hundredth of all that equity to each one of those 100 pages. Well, if you actually only have, um, you know, 10 pages, then you're sending a tenth of that equity to, uh, to, to those pages, to, to each one of those 10 pages. So it's, it's generally a better idea to have a minimal amount of extraneous linkage on your, on your site and only use categorization to, to really help um, the user find your content better and curate your stuff in, in terms of categories. But um, I see people all the time like put a ton of categories out there just to get as latch on to many as key SEO keywords as they can. And really they're just diluting the, 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 uh, the, the value of all the links that they're getting from to their site across a bunch of useless pages. So um, that's that's the way that I look at it. I, I would also add that um, as a user interface designer, user experience designer, um, I when I'm designing, developing a site or page, anything for the web, I'm not thinking about SEO and search bots. You know, I mean, it's like. Like that, that, that was why I turned it off on my very first step because I'm, when I'm designing and building a site, I'm thinking about the user. Think about the user experience. If the user hits your site and they see a blog post that has 30 categories, they're going to go, huh? And it's going to look bad. You know, I mean, I mean you're, you're going to confuse people off the bat. Give people the most simple entry to that, that thing and then, okay, maybe they will share it out there in the world or maybe Google will find this this one thing and find the best, you know, solution all the way down the road. But, I, I mean, it's, 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 it's usually better to think about the user first because that, that's who your content is for. I mean, that, that, that's what the Internet is for, is for that person approaching the content. How are they going to see it? When, when, I, um, when I set up blogs, I generally, you know, for myself or for clients, I would, I use categories as a way to, as like an, I don't think a blog post should go in more than one category. Um, and I think if, if you think in terms like that and you've got a real focused niche or a real focused set of topics you, you blog about or you write about or you structure in your site, um, you probably shouldn't have that many categories to begin with. Um, I think if you have more than seven, you may have too many. Maybe not. That's just my personal preference. But you use tags at that point, right? Exactly. Yeah, so I use tags just to help move... If, and I really don't post tags on my. I don't display the tags on my post. I may have a tag page where you can go through and look at all the tags, but I generally like a really clean site that doesn't have a lot of links that move people around. Maybe I don't care about SEO <laughs> or moving people around the site, but I just don't like to junk the page up with more than what I want someone to read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, you know, I think Alan, uh, you had said, you know, you do things for the user, um, and and I, I think any. It's really important for everybody to understand that any SEO tactic that's worth a damn is rooted in what's best for the user. And so you'll find that often there are SEO tactics that you will employ uh, to to incre increase the user experience. So you know you might say let's speed up the page for you know for the sake of SEO um, because Google rewards uh, sites that load faster. But Google does that because people expect a fast website, and so it's for the user in the first place. Uh, and to your point too, Chris. You know, if, if you build a website and you try to focus on way too much, then uh, from an SEO perspective, you're not really sending a very strong signal to Google about what your site is about and what it should right. rank for. You're sending a very, uh, you know, noise-laden um, um, uh you know, pat, uh, signal to them, and you, it's it's going to be much harder for you to rank. So, you know, smaller categories, you know, fewer categories, more focused on on the niche that you, pri you you look to serve is good for both. You know, your user. It's good from a publishing perspective, and it's really great from an SEO perspective. So, you know, whenever you whenever you know whenever something's good for everything, then it must be the right thing to do, right? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Well, guys, um, I I think. 
this is uh, we've we've gone through two of our four topics or, or three of our four topics here today, but um, uh, we're kind of getting you know close to an hour here, and I and I want to be respectful of your time, but um, I think that's that we we should probably end up um, uh, on a bright note here. So really appreciate you guys uh, coming along here, and uh, for the for the viewers at home. Um, you know, feel free. You can you can always contact me. Um, uh, uh, bigpictureweb.com. I write about Squarespace. Um, I'm more of a marketer, so you know. But I have a lot of designer resources on my site for people that are looking for you know design professional design help or people that are looking for websites to be inspired by. I have that too. Um, you can connect with me on Twitter at JL Broughton. Facebook. You see my Facebook page. And then if <laughs> Talk about poor user experiences there. There's my Google Plus profile ID. <laughs> so hopefully they, they allow that to be a little bit uh, shorter in the, in the future here. But, um, but yeah, so uh, uh, guys, thanks so much. If you want to sign off and, and, and uh, uh, give, your, give who, who you are and where you're from, one more plug so people know where to find you. Yeah. Uh, Who's going, uh, I guess Alan's going first. Oh, I see. He's written it on the screen. Clever, clever, clever. Okay. Uh, got mine up. <laughs> okay. There's Alan. Thanks, Alan. All Sorry, right. I, I didn't have my audio unmuted. I just totally ruined it. <laughs> you really did. Uh, That's all right. We're used to it, my friend. We're used to it. That's why we have editing for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's try that again. Alan, why don't, you, uh, why don't you tell people where they can find you? Oh, you can find me over at squareflare.com. For everything you do, Squarespace is for you over at Square. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> thanks, Alan. Can we, start, can we start yeah. over? No, we're, we're done. Ed Lucas, thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, everybody be sure to listen to the Common Good Podcast.com. Thank you. Okay. And Chris, Sorry, they, I, didn't, I didn't know oh, I had a specific, yeah, specific I, icon coming to me. <laughs> yeah, uh, Squarespace for Dummies. Um, check it out. You can get it for your iPhone, iPad, and I don't know how to get that screen. Uh, stop it from sharing, otherwise you'd see my face right now. Oh, we see your face. Don't worry. Oh, do you? Okay, because I can yeah, look it's like frozen, the though. bug's still up. There you go. Yeah. Oh, there well. We go. Okay, ahead. whatever. Yeah, thanks for having me. I had a good time. Thanks, so, guys. So, we'll do this in... Whoa. <laughs> Squarespace for Dummies, right? That, that, that's the book, Squarespace for Dummies. It is, for awesome. smart people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks again, everybody, for joining. Uh, if you have an idea for the show, please feel free to submit it at bigpictureweb.com, and I uh, hope to see you in the future. All right, thanks.